welcome to gaffa's podcast series again every week we come up with a new guest who share his or her insight knowledge and experience in the field of investigation forensic accounting finance and similar fields these guests been called from different industry so that they can share their views how the dynamics of markets are changing how the profession is changing our today's guest is none other than mr surat mukherjee surat is a well known name when it comes to the profession of audit currently serving as head of audit in the times group his vast knowledge and experience include experience with philips sony dalmia group and many other big brand names our guest for today surat will have a very interactive session where he will discuss his views his experience and how audit profession is changing so let's join surat in this podcast and enjoy the conversation uh, welcome surat welcome to gafas podcast thank you kanwal ji thank you for having me so surat before we start this conversation and start interacting i would like to know something about yourself you are into this profession of audit for long what exactly attracted you towards this particular profession tell me something about yourself how did you start what all have you achieved i know the list is really really long but if you can just start a bit about it okay so kanwal ji uh, to be very honest we are still learning uh, in this profession because as we grow in this profession we always understand that every day is a new day so you know there is there is no end to learning and there is no end to being amazed with the opportunity this field provides and the very interesting part is that uh, uh, i am not a career internal auditor so when i started uh, with my journey uh which almost now span close to more than 30 years now post qualification initially i started as a line function guy so the first 15 years of my career has been in two different operating roles from you know basically starting from an intern to an accounts officer to zonal controller to finance controller and stuff like that and what always uh, intrigued me and what always motivated me because of my lineage of uh, chartered accountancy and cost accountancy is to become be systematic to follow rules norms processes sops as an operating guy also and we used to get audited at that point of time and even after our best efforts you know something or the other we used to always miss so as i grew in my professional life during my philips days to my sony days and when i uh, came to delhi from calcutta because my initial uh, journey from my education to my first about 8 to 10 years is in calcutta and then i when i moved to the corporate setup and the world really opened up when you are in a corporate office you are dealing with multiple people multiple stakeholders that is the point of time in sony when i was heading in the fpna of the company we were also tasked with setting up a internal audit department in the organization and that is how the journey started because at that point of time we were a small subsidiary in the global terms in sony so people used to come from singapore and asia pacific and japan to audit us you know maybe once a year or once every alternate year also but then as we started growing we understood that we need an audit department also so i was tasked with uh, that particular function and that point of time we used to co-source it with an outsourcing firm and that is when i really started my liking towards this uh, profession that uh, i could actually set things right i could actually make sure uh, things are working as per the protocol be flexible at the same time because me being from the operating uh, background i really understand what are the bottlenecks and what really is very easy to write down on a piece of sop and say you need to do it day in and day out and then how the real world operates when you get instructions you know not in those days of even sms came late in so you know no whatsapp at that point of time so people will just say do this pass this bill pay this and all and and there are it's not easy to uh, say no 
to your superior and bosses. So how do you create systems and processes through which you can guide people to follow a certain protocol? And then also most importantly to document stuff. Because when I was in line function, I always used to remember that when an auditor will come and ask about a transaction, you need to scratch your head and, you know, try to find out what happened on that day or who said what and all. So we understood that documentation is extremely important because you really don't remember unless and until there is a grave situation which has happened with you. If I ask you, Kanwaljit, what did you have for breakfast on 17th of May? you will never remember what you really had. You know, you'll have to really dig deep into it to see whether I was traveling, whether I was on that day in India or abroad. But imagine a drop of ketchup would have fallen on your shirt on that day when you are going for a very important meeting and you are in a conference hall and a drop of ketchup would have fallen on you. You would remember that day very, very vividly. That yes, this is what happened and this is what I was having and and I thought I will not have this and I had that and stuff like that. So something if it happens, something important, something tragic, you will remember those days more vividly as compared to your day to day routine. Though the auditor may ask you, I'm asking you about your breakfast. You did it and it was only one month back or two months back and how you can see you can't remember. So what will you say? You will say, yeah, I typically generally have... Uh, cereals or oats or I have sandwiches but I really don't know what I had that day and then if there is a CCTV recording of you having something on that day in some hotel or some place they'll say look you had noodles that day in the morning but you are lying so there is no intention of you to do so but you end up getting not the trust of the people so it's extremely important that we understand that uh, systems and processes are very important and Sadly to say, uh, Kanwaljit, that I feel the auditors don't get the right kind of due respect and right kind of due importance in the system. The role which we play in our uh, life and in our career uh, many times gets uh, diluted because we are seen as showstoppers. But as you know, what we say is brakes are extremely important for a vehicle to run at very high speed. If you are given a Ferrari, and told that this doesn't have a brake, I'm sure you're not going to drive the Ferrari more than five kilometers an hour. So that's why the countermeasure, the counterbalance, the audit, these functions are extremely important. And large organizations, transnational, multinational organizations who work under different culture, different time zone, different countries, and be successful with billions and dollars of business, all have a very, very robust control function, very, very robust checks and balances in audit departments. And that's why companies like GE, Unilever invested huge amount of time and money and they had these lateral hirings into these departments wherein they hired and made sure that leaders, before they become leaders in the organization, before they lead functions, before they lead geographies, before they lead, lead countries and continents, they have to have a decent stream in the audit department of the organization to understand process, understand systems, understand how and why they are important to the uh, reputation of the organization. Very so well. you may say I came into it by accident, but I don't regret it. Absolutely. And as you rightly mentioned, you know, auditors put a lot of hard work. However, uh, most of the time, people are scared of auditors. Me being into audit for a long time, I can absolutely vouch and agree with what you just said. So, Surat, you've been into this profession now for a very long time and now heading such a big group in such a responsible position. What are or what maybe one or two few a very challenging cases you may have come across and uh, me and our audience would definitely like to understand how did you deal with that? You know, our audit is a very sensitive profession. Our job is having a very high level of responsibility. So how did you manage to deal with that? If you would like to just, you know, share some of the incident from your life. I think, Anwaljit, the biggest responsibility which we as an auditor, we carry is that we are looked as, uh, you know, jack of all trades. And I will not say the very next line that master of none, because we have to come forward as, you know, jack of all trades and master of all. So 
these, as you rightly mentioned, uh, some of the groups I have worked with have multiple business lines and very, very, uh, you know, talented, very, very experienced people leading the show. So what is important is that how do you a understand the business, understand what works and what doesn't work, what culturally fits into the organization, because even something as simple as communication, speaking, writing an email, salutations, tone of the communication, be it written or verbal, all has unique packages which are there, which may be very different from one company to the other. So what is extremely important is you need to A, understand the business to get the respect of the person who you are speaking to because you are coming here to find out some areas of improvement, if I may not say fault, but areas of improvement, specifically in matured organizations, and then you need to make it palatable for them so that they don't feel offended, they don't feel irritated, they don't feel that somebody is coming and doing net speaking. So that's an extremely important stuff is to have patience, have understanding of their business realities, data points, market realities, and then have a confidential wall mechanism wherein you don't do side talk, you don't share somebody's blemishes or somebody's weakness with somebody else. And at the same time, you give a very, very constructive and a very, very forward looking output as a recommendation to the person. And then massage it and and to convert it into a very, very palatable dish so that the person sees a win-win situation for him. That, okay, if I do this, this is how I'm also going to benefit and how my care is also going to be benefited. And Kanwaljit, you being also a seasoned auditor, you would know that many of your recommendation, many of my recommendations have been defended in front of us, but then the management has been very smart in converting them into big projects. And I have seen people walking up the diocese and getting a lot of accolades and a lot of praise and a lot of rewards for converting what was a mere audit observation into a project at an all India level, right? Now, at that point of time, I may have not got the reward myself, but somehow deep within the person knew that we picked it up from an audit observation or we picked it up from an improvement obs observations. Many point of time, we debate whether it's a control issue or whether it's a business improvement or a strategic initiative and stuff like that. And I get a lot of pushback saying, no, no, this is not an audit observation, right? You are talking about efficiency of transportation. Now, efficiency of transportation is not an audit observation. You tell me, did I pay more? Did I don't do a contract? Did I make a mistake in making a payment? Did I not deduct my taxes and stuff like that? Then you are fine. But the moment you talk about how you could have optimized the route, how you could have made sure that you are hiring the right kind of vehicle. Are there ideal vehicles standing somewhere, thereby losing money? All of these, they say, no, 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 these are business improvement suggestions. We may, we may not take it. Don't put it in the report. But I always used to put it in the report and I used to be very happy to see that later on they will convert this into projects of better vehicle utilization, route optimization, use of Google Maps and Google Tracker and stuff like that would come in. So that is when the real value comes in and the other person, though he may not acknowledge it in front of you on your face, but knows deep within that what these set of people came and told us really, really helped us in our care, in setting care for the forward looking year and we have improved as a business. So what I feel is most important for us is to have no biases. We can't go with a fixed mindset about somebody is good, somebody is bad, somebody is right, somebody is wrong. You need to go with a very open mindset, give the due tolerance to the business because they are doing something which is real time, real life situation. They're not doing a play acting. They're not looking at an SOP all the point of time. Now, I have not worked too much Kanwaljit in regulated business. So when you are in a BFSI segment, for example, 
certain compliances is not a choice. You will have to always do it. They are mandated and they have to be done, which is very different from a manufacturing setup. So if you leave around the taxation and the other part of it, where which is obviously non-compromisable, that what you need to deduct and what you need to do, and the accounting part of it, on the real world work, how they hire, how they transact, how they manage, what kind of MIS they do, what kind of communication goes to the entire uh, vendor and stakeholder world. There are a lot of flexibilities which are there. And they always feel that this flexibility is what takes them forward. So as a risk management professional, how do you marry these two? How do you make sure that A, they have the feeling that they are in control, they are able to decide what they want to decide and do it the way they want to do it. At the same time, it's like as a guardian, we are guarding the guardrails so that nobody falls off or nobody does something which is extremely silly so that it has an impact on the brand or it has an impact on the reputation of the organization. So if you are doing something, we need to create and have a look at the blueprint to say if there is a strategy or a plan in place to withdraw an item, if there is a strategy in place to compensate the market in case anything goes wrong, whether people are thinking in those lines, because sometimes the adrenaline and the euphoria of doing something new puts you in a situation where there can be a serious financial loss or a serious loss of reputation. So have you done all your steps? Have you taken all the precautions? So it's like taking a bungee jumping. You, you want to make doubly sure that you have all the uh, fences and all the support which is required and the traction is ready, your body weight is measured and based on that, the counterweight is put. So it is extremely important that we give them this feeling that you go ahead and do whatever you want to do, but make us a part of the journey so that we can be the torch bearer on a certain areas which generally become a blind spot for you people. Very rightly mentioned. So as Suraj just mentioned that we auditors are in the role of being a guardian. There may be a lot of time where auditors may not get due recognition for their work, but we are still into this profession. Our task is to safeguard the businesses to make sure that business moves in right direction. And that's exactly where auditors, without even worrying about rewards, recognition, they put in their best effort and always try to safeguard. Each time there's a saying that auditors is the third line of defense. I actually think that they are not the one who come at the last. They are actually there from the very beginning. Even when management is thinking about risk management, and creating the strategy for the business and first line, auditors are very much there. Absolutely. So once we have discussed that the life of auditor is full of challenges, and of course, every day is a new challenge, which we have to deal. So at this point of time, I would also like to understand from you, Surat, that now audit is no longer an activity where we are just like a a whistleblower or we are just a watchdog. Now the role of auditors are certainly changing and becoming more like a bloodhound. Each time we do audit, it is not just about compliance or checklist driven anymore. There are a lot of risk, vulnerability, which may also include fraud risks. So how do you think auditors comes into picture when it comes to fraud investigation? Even if it is not our primary responsibility, are we as an auditor really responsible for it? If yes, how? I think uh, to answer to this question, Kanwaljit, we should take a step back. As you rightly mentioned that uh, we are in the blueprinting phase or in the strategic phase of a business. If we are really there, then it is our responsibility that with operational controls or IT controls, we also put a dash of fraud controls around it. Based on our experience, what can go wrong? 
without underestimating the power of the fraudster as we all know the fraudsters are working 24 by 7 and they are willing to exploit even the minutest of comfort zone in your business the moment you have thought that yes i have completely ring fenced my risk and nothing can go wrong that is the time when the fraudsters will strike you so when you are designing your business model when you are designing your customer interfaces when you are designing your productivity model you will have to always make sure that you think like a fraudster put that hat on your head and think what can go wrong what if this doesn't work what if that doesn't work so without saying that nothing can go wrong and i have done the best you will have to think that everything can go wrong and the chain is as strong as the weakest link so you will have to foresee and when you put that foresight your learning has to be implemented on a 360 basis whichever industry you are in you are using communication you are using telecommunication you are using internet you are using banking channels you are using your point of sale products so all these risks whichever these industries face can be necessarily your risks also so you will have to map them and find out whether by use of technology or by use of maker checker control or by way of segregation of duty some of these words may found may sound cliche maker checker what is maker checker today everything we have automated what is segregation of duty now we have very few people we have started working uh, in the early 90s when we had floor full of people looking at only ap of one company one zone right and today you have maybe a computer doing it but are the controls in place can somebody fleece you with uh, asking for a duplicate payment can somebody fleece you by pushing a wrong grn into your system can somebody fleece you by uh, uh, manipulating your quality parameters can somebody fleece you by popping up as a uh, fraud customer totally asking for a false refund so there are plethora of risk which is available and which is applicable to every single industry you can't say no no i'm not a bfsi so my risk are these not that you have something which is important to your business that could be your patent it could be your data it could be your drawings it could be your executional sop many 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 such things which are there and everything is important to the fraudster because he gets it for free and then he can monetize it he can blackmail you he can extort money from you and he can hold you to ransom so we as an auditor our most important steps are a to convince the management to put these controls in place at the same time make sure we don't go for an overkill because every control has a cost and every control also slows down the business so we will have to make sure we use controls like salt and sugar in our cuisine so that they don't become tasteless or they don't become too salty or too sugary we'll have to make sure that we give the right amount of controls and at the same time keep monitoring them keep monitoring the key leakage areas keep monitoring the key assets by way of either technological intervention so that if anything goes wrong you get a tickler the transaction is pushed into a hold zone the transaction is pushed into higher approval zone so we have to protect our as well as our consumers or customers data information and assets for which they have trusted us so it is very very pertinent to note that you cannot think of a situation where the fraudster is not watching you, not interested about your business model or not interested about your money. Howsoever big or howsoever small you are. If you are big, your resilience is big, your appetite to withhold uh, impact is more as compared to if you are small. If you are small, you can be shut down also overnight because of a fraud attack and stuff like that. So it is important that as our own company will have to take it very seriously and we'll have to keep toiling with the management because 
the main idea of fraud is a very taboo word today because we all feel we are working in a environment of trust loyalty empathy and mutual cooperation but the fraudsters are sitting in between us in between all these the fraudsters are sitting right so we'll have to make sure we trust but at the same time we check we verify absolutely and thank you so much for this uh, deep insight because most of the time auditors are not very clear when it comes to their responsibility in fraud prevention or fraud detection now since market is changing so rapidly i'm sure the role of auditors and the tool and techniques the auditors are using or will be using in future will also change as we hear a lot about data analytics use of artificial intelligence there are countries who are making ia profession as more of a robotic profession where they believe that auditors as a human being may not be required to do a checklist driven work so is it a scary time for us as an auditor uh, some people believe that probably their job would not be there in future what do you think about ai how do you think it's going to impact us as an auditor in our profession karnal ji the impact is going to be huge if not it is already huge of ai generative ai or any technology but having said that we'll have to trust our instinct and trust our quality as a human being and that quality which we all possess and we are only tra training the different learning models and different artificial intelligence model they are getting trained on the basis of our intelligence so what is important for us is to understand that the computer is able to do repetitive task and is able to learn from what we are telling them and make our life easy take away mundane take away uh you know lethargy or you may say drudginess from our work and leave our quality time to explore more areas kanwaljit when you started i am very sure you would have been doing sample based audits you will go to a client and pick up 25 samples 50 samples client will struggle to give you that information or that hard copy vouchers and stuff like that today what ai has given you is the power to check billions of transaction millions of transaction match them with vouchers match them with contracts and then somebody telling you look there are 50 or 60 vouchers where it seems that these are not matching with you these you should look deep into and then so you have a huge universe from which you are given a sample on which then you can maybe talk to the customer uh, look at the verifiability of the documents or the transaction uh, meet and do certain benchmarks and come up with observations which are unique which are extremely powerful so you will have to take ai i will have to take ai as an enabler to protect myself protect my audit steps protect my certification as an auditor when you are saying that the control environment is good it is delivering results and transactions are happening the way it is designed to happen who on earth if any if i create thousands of kanwaljit or thousands of surat still they will get fatigued by doing the same work so if i have a artificial intelligence which is a helping me to do multiple transactions quickly without fatigue when i am sleeping it is working and at the same time it is also with its natural learning process augmenting my thoughts by saying that look this is also some problem this is also some problem it's like a good assistant which you have which is going to give you a pop up ma'am look at this this also seems to be some problem this seems very weird this seems not as per the benford analysis this seems not as per our statistical model so instead of being afraid of being obsolete we have to embrace that technology increase our adoption of technology today programming 
uh, has become easy. You may not learn languages, but there are softwares which are coming where you can talk and the software will start writing programs for you. So we'll have to embrace them. Imagine, I'm sure, um, Kanwaljit, you have, you have used Lotus. And if you have used Lotus, in Lotus, you have to literally remember the commands like uh, slash file save enter that's the that was the command you have to give in lotus or in dos to actually do business and today we have icons you know icons of saving icons of copying icon of cut paste so even if you are if you don't know it by looking at the icon you can actually do stuff so every single month is making technology more accessible and more consumer friendly so if you embrace them, I think there is no need to be afraid. Am I afraid of my mobile phone today? Am I afraid of my car, which can actually take care of itself today? Am I afraid to get into an aircraft today? I'm sure once upon a time, it was a very scary experience of those people who started flying in the aircraft for the first time. But today we know that the chance of an aircraft facing an accident is much less as compared to we getting an accident while walking on the road. So my two cents on this is that we have to take it head on, adapt, accept the change and use it for giving a much better sleep to ourselves. You as a professional Kanwaljit, when you say, sir, your report is fine and your, your health is fine, your organization health is fine. You yourself earlier would think that I have only checked 25 samples and there are 35,000 vouchers. Have I picked the right sample or not? However, today, you know that with these technology, you can give a better assurance. Thank you so much, Suraj, for giving this comfort because a lot of people are really scared when AI is coming and many of them believe that AI could replace them. So it, it's a big relief to hear that. All right, Suraj. So once we have understood you know, how technology might be helping us as an auditor, and of course, our profession of audit. I would also like to understand what are the few key skills which uh, the candidates who would really want to get into audit profession would have. We at Global Association of Forensic Accountant continuously are trying to create a difference by upgrading the skill set when it comes to forensic accounting, forensic auditing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and related fields. But what are the few key skills which you think are kind of must for at least the young crowd who are entering into this profession? I think, um, Kamaljit, I'll break this into two sets of skills. One is uh, skills which you need to have for getting into investigation. And the second would be soft skills, which is extremely important for this profession, without which uh, you will hit a wall. So the skills which you need, because any fraud, any investigation finally boils down into accounting and numbers. So you may not be a chartered accountant or you may not be having an accounting degree, but you need to understand numbers and you need to understand the flow of events, flow of transaction, how it finally, because at the end of the day, the fraudster wants something which they can monetize and that will impact your profit, loss and your assets. So understanding the basics of accounting is extremely important. How does order to cash cycle goes, how purchase procure to pay cycle goes, how record to report cycle goes, right? That's one set which is extremely important. Second, you need to have a very open approach to technology because in your investigation, you will go to different industries, different sets of technology. And this is a landscape which is very, very dynamic today. So you will have to have the appetite to understand technology. And then whenever you are getting an opportunity to work in an assignment, get more deeper into it and inculcate a habit to embrace it you cannot today say that i want to do this manually or i want to do that manually as we progress every single industry is getting highly digitized so we'll have to understand technology 
both with respect to hardware and software. So the more you increase your domain, the more flexible you are with respect to getting more assignments, getting sucked into more transactions and deals and negotiations. This is the second thing. The third thing is the I for detail and I to deep dive into the transaction and get deeper and deeper and deeper into it. You can't be doing anything superficially when you are doing an investigation. You will have to pick areas and go to the ground zero, then minus to understand what was the psyche, what was the philosophy, whether what we are investigating is the target or was the target something else. Because the leakage point could be multiple. You having done multiple investigation would have seen that our starting point is sometimes somewhere and we completely end up in a completely uncharted territory. And then we understand that there is a much bigger thing which we have not caught. And we were actually with the tail of the lion and the head is somewhere else. So it is extremely again important to get deeper into it and at the same time understand the law around that industry and also law around prosecution and law around how the finally because every investigation will land into the court eventually. Whether you want to prosecute somebody, whether you want to acquit somebody, whether you want to prove that the promoters or the founders or the shareholders didn't have any malintent for all that, you need to understand that while you are investigating, you need to record things in a manner. If you are doing a forensic imaging of a device, a hardware, how do you do it so that the evidence doesn't get challenged in the next level? So knowing about the law, knowing about how, because one are small investigations which you are doing inside a company which leads to termination of an employee or a group of employees. But the moment that group of employee goes to the court and challenges your prosecution or your step, that's a whole different world which opens up in front of you. Court will ask questions which you have never heard of. They'll ask you, did you give them notice? Did you give them time to... Uh, speak did you give them enough uh, did your policy talk about that the laptop is your company laptop that they cannot keep their personal information that when you image did you keep a true copy of that image did you give the report to them in writing did you give them enough opportunity to present their case so all these things maybe in our in-house investigation sometimes we skip we are in a hurry to execute our actions, execute people, suspend them, transfer them, demote them, terminate them. But in the process, if you are not doing it in a manner which can be legally challenged at a later point of time, then you may be licking back your spit and taking them back in the system. They would be reinstated with full honor, with full salary, with compensation and whatnot. And you will be then looking like a I'll be then looking like a silly fool, right? So these four aspects are extremely important, right? The other aspects which are important is how do you interview people? How do you talk to people? How do you navigate through a process of interview or interrogation? How do you keep your story ready with yourself so that you can contradict a distraction? How much you need to show? How much you don't need to show? How do you draft a report? How do you keep your evidences? Again, another very important thing, chain of evidences, chain of command. All these things are extremely important, specifically when you are doing large cases, when you are doing cases which are important for public interest and stuff like that. So in a whole, uh, when you are doing forensics, you are a master auditor. You're not an auditor alone. You are a master auditor and you have to have multiple different kinds of skills. So I would say if somebody wants a career in forensic, he or she should start with a normal auditing career and then transgress and move himself or herself into a role where then they understand people, process, technology, business.
and they are also a master of litigation as well as legal side of it though i'm sure there will be subject matter specialist in each of it but as an investigator the more wide is your domain and your view you be really become an asset to the organization or to the investigation team very true very true so these these skill sets are certainly a must when it comes to entering into the profession of audit as well as into investigation now after having a, a very serious talk around frauds audit coming back to a lighter note so how does surat look like in personal life so after having a tough day playing with numbers playing with evidences what energizes you how what exactly you like so how is surat in personal life karmal ji uh, you know the personal life today has been limited to very little uh, you know window and uh, so we'll have to mix our work with pleasure so at all the time so you know we, you all know we spend 12 hours on an average uh, uh, per day in office and then if you take what doctors say a good sleep of 6 to 7 hours what you have got left is precious little but in that precious little time today there is overflow of uh, information stories uh, news uh, uh, new frauds happening here and there funny ways of people losing money uh, so uh, i personally believe that to become a investigator or to become an auditor what gives you edge is if you really know what's happening around you how the fraudsters as i said earlier they are very ingenious people you know at the back end you may have a illiterate person but that illiterate person knows how to talk to you how to create a scenario which will make you empathetic towards them and then click on a link and you lose your information your data your sleep and your everything so understanding about what's happening around you uh understanding the new technology so i sometimes uh, you know keep tooling uh, on on new technologies which are coming some of them are completely alien foreign i don't understand anything but i read a few paragraphs a few pages and then i get uh, uh, not so much interested i i take a back seat but then it allows me to have a conversation it allows me to have a conversation with somebody who who can make me understand that piece where i left and then maybe i can pick up two more pages to go a little bit deeper into it and then again repeat the same so i talk to you know somebody like you who is more experienced more uh, industry agnostic because of your exposure as a consultant to plethora of industries plethora of different kinds of people unlike us in industry sometimes we get cocooned to our world the people around us but kanwal ji you meet multiple people uh, for business uh, some you succeed in convincing some you don't uh, you give i know lot of trainings with uh, multiple very very uh, niche uh, associations and organizations when i look at your uh, linkedin posts uh, cbis and cids and eds of the world gets trained by you so uh, so you get a a grand perspective of it so sometimes when i talk to you and i have those kind of cobwebs i'll try to you know uh, pick into your experience to understand what does it mean what does that term actually connot to and stuff like that so our world our reading also revolves around this because now you know our kids are grown up so there was a time when they would take away some of our time when we had actually no time for them but they will try to you know throw a homework at us and say you know, do this drawing for me or do this coloring for me thankfully that is gone but then uh, you know other things come up uh, uh, that uh, we feel that we should contribute so sometimes we write a little bit of an article that takes a long period of time you know putting your ideas together and obviously spending a little bit of time with uh, family uh, 
uh, and moving around, going to places. And me as an investigator, Karnaljit, believe you me, whenever I move, walk into a confined place or a or a say a movie hall, I think like how safe this is. Where is the exit route? Uh, are these uh, safety things happen? You know, I I go and look and peep at those fire extinguishers to see that uh, do they have their use by dates and and you will not believe in one of these places i pointed out to their manager that look your three or four fire extinguishers are quite gone your use by date so the person appreciated it and said yeah 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 we should get it done so you know you are once an auditor you are always an auditor so you are looking at things you are looking at labels you are looking at expiry date you know you are looking whenever wherever you are sitting you are looking at safety security and you know stuff like that so so that helps so that has become part of my inseparable part of you know the life yes of course once an auditor always an auditor but i would like to tell my audience you know for just being modest not talking much about he is an amazing speaker and uh, uh you know i've met him in one of the speaking uh, opportunity itself and uh, there are a lot of uh, areas where so that is very very good when it comes to sharing the knowledge so apart from his own audit and you know work profile he is quite a lot into speaking and training so so that's the part i think surat has missed talking but then yes that's true fair so i think it was such an amazing uh, you know experience interacting with you surat and uh, now before you uh, you know before we wind up i would like to just have one last piece of advice from you especially for people uh, youngsters out there who are looking at people like you maybe as a role model they would like to you know achieve the same kind of success the recognition you have achieved so what would be one piece of uh, advice which you would like to offer to our audience uh, karmajit i think uh, the old uh, old virtues of uh, being honest uh, working in the space of integrity uh, not uh, being overawed by the situation but sticking to your gut feel sticking to your principles uh, would never die never fade never age uh, as auditors you need to be very conscious about your biases about your likings and dislikings uh, and you should never allow that to get into your uh, path you should never allow that to obstruct your vision obstruct your thought obstruct your speech and obstruct your delivery i'm sure you as a professional would have faced uh, multiple situations where somebody may have asked you to write a report in a certain manner somebody would have asked you to do an investigation in a certain manner and many places you may have walked away from that investigation leaving a lot of money on the table just because you felt that you are not able to answer your inner conscience that you are doing the right job irrespective of who is watching or who is supervising you so it is extremely important that we all need to value ourselves we have to value what we do we have to value what we stand for and should not get carried away by rhetoric should not get carried away by the noise around us should not get carried away i understand that as professionals we do some compromises here and there but ataman namak ya namak mein aata wo wala baat hai you know sometimes we do word our report in a different manner maybe in a in a more polished manner as compared to what i would want to write but then it should not impact my data point or it should not impact my conclusion i may be more polished i may spread my report a, a bit more thin there are these small things which we have to do as a working professional as a consultant as anybody and everybody but then that should not overall impact what we stand for what we believe in after a hard day's work you should go back home you should feel contented you should feel satisfied and you should have a good sleep if there is something which is not allowing you to sleep if there is something which is breaking your conscience then you should work on it if you have given it to a pressure if you have given into a certain uh push or a force 
we have to be then mindful. We may not correct it then and there, but then do we work with such people? Do we work with such organizations? Do we work with such environment? That's a call we can always take. Yes, we need a earning for our life, for our salary, for our food and everything, for our living. But then that should not shroud the other bigger picture. So if I decide today, though, this is not the organization which matches my value or matches my conscience or matches my principles, then two months, three months, six months, whatever the period may be, I'll move on. Right. That is an honesty which we should maintain. And once you do that, there are ways and means God has his or her own way of guiding you to very, very conflicting uh, positions, very, very conflicting situations. And somebody or the other will show you the way. Uh, and I'm sure, Karnamaljit, with your experience also, you have seen this, uh, that when you are in complete doldrums and it's completely blank, somebody, some colleague, some uh, external guy, something you watch on TV tells you what to do and what you stand for. Of course. Thank you so very much for this piece of advice. And I also uh, would vouch for the same that there are no shortcuts for success. So today, if we look at Surat reaching to that level, it has not been achieved in a single day. Every day is a learning. Every assignment is a learning. So everybody wants success fast, but then be honest to your work. And absolutely, the thing which I also personally think is that market never gets saturated with good quality. So give your best, whatever you do. With this, we will uh, you know finish our podcast here. And thank you so much, Surat, for being with us, uh, taking time out from your busy schedule. And I'm sure our audience would love to watch you on this podcast. Thank you so my, much. My absolute pleasure, Kanwaljit. Uh, it was a very, very nice conversation. Always enjoy speaking to you and uh, giving whatever I have because I am in a stage of career where, you know, if my experience is getting outdated very soon, very quickly. So if I can give my, uh, my learning, my own uh, success, whatever you call it, uh, or failures, uh, there are many uh, to the audience and if they can pick even a little bit from this and gain uh, then it will be a real pleasure for me so thank you again for inviting me and uh, allowing me the opportunity to uh, express myself thank you so much all the best to you thank you so much